A new peer-reviewed study has proven that giving police officers weapons of war absolutely does nothing to reduce crime rates. I have Farron Cousins here, uh, the editor of the Trial Lawyer Magazine, to talk about it. Uh, you know, Farron, we, we've done this story so many times. It's almost, you're talking about airplanes, grenades, uh, rocket launchers, tanks, drones. Uh, what, what happens is this is surplus, right? The military weapons industry wants to sell more weapons. So they go to the military and they said, ah, you need new tanks, yeah. you need new grenades, you need new airplanes, let's get rid of the old and bring in the new. And so this is just, it's another way the weapons industry makes money. It's doing nothing as far as stopping crime in the United States, according to these studies. What's your take? Right, and you know, that's a really good point to start off with there, is this 1033 program is what it's called. Uh, and that, that's exactly what it is. You have the defense industry that wants to keep selling more weapons each year. They know the Pentagon's plan with over $700 billion every year. So where does it go? Mm. Well, you have to buy the new the new drone we have out because the, the software is a little bit faster than your old version. Okay, well, what do we do with the old version? Let's give it to police officers because sure, they, they need a drone for some reason. I'm not talking about the little ones you can go buy at Best Buy. Mm. I'm talking about a literal military grade drone yeah. that you see flying from the U.S. over in the Middle East. I mean, that's what we're dealing with. You can with carry here. a missile if you have it, to. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so here it's, it's a recruitment tool. That's the other part of it. Kid wants to be a policeman. Look, I, you're going to look like G.I. Joe mm -hmm. before you get done. No, you're not going to have to serve in Iraq, but you're going to be right here in the police department and you're going to be dressed up like, a, you know, like a ninja, a, a ninja soldier. And it's kind of, you know, it makes sense. It's a draw for, for kids coming out of school sure. or maybe the, out of junior college that want to do this. I can't, you can't blame them for it, but it, it's not really accomplishing anything. And I, the next question I had, well, is it about police safety? If they have all these toys, what does it say about police safety? Well, unfortunately, these new studies show that this program has done absolutely nothing to keep officers safe. You still are seeing the same number of police officers killed every single year, including those who are driving around in the tanks using all this fancy military grade riot gear. It's not keeping them safe. And in fact, it's not keeping communities safe either. If anything, these re uh, reports show it's making communities feel more under attack. Okay, let They me, view this as a threat. Let me give you the other side of it. Okay, here's the other side. There's always many sides to everything. You have the cartel, the drug cartel on border states in the United States. They're starting to see new increases of crime with a, basically cartel coming right over, the, right over the border. And they're saying down on the border, we need this because the Mexican cartel is armed better than we are. And that is true. That is the truth. So that's their best argument right now. I and mean, I'm hearing it more and more that that's why we need all of this stuff. We need drones, we need tanks. Uh, we, we need this stuff because the other side has it. And the other side now is Mexican cartel moving in the United States. What do you think? Well, you know, there could be an argument made for that, but I think you're talking about, you know, this should be something dealt with by a different government agency, not your local police force. Mm. So that's mm. where, you know, if you needed this surplus material for that, the 1033 program should instead say, let's not give it to Barney Fife over here at your local police station. Let's instead maybe put this on the border patrol on, you know, uh, customs, whatever. A new entity. Right, yeah. you know, something Maybe. that actually deals with that. The FBI, I, yeah. not that we want them, no. <laughs> you know, we don't really want any of this out there, but we also have to be realistic and understand <laughs> Threats do exist. Now you have to answer. You have right. to answer that argument when it's made. But I think you <laughs> may be right there. A popular weight loss drug sold under the brand name Belvig has been voluntarily recalled after a strong link between the drug and certain types of fatal cancers. And I have Steve Longo here to talk to me about that. Who's handling this case? Steve, first of all, let me let me clear something up. There is no such thing as a voluntary recall. You understand that? Absolutely. The company likes to say we voluntarily took it off the market. No. It's the FDA said either you take it off the market or you're going to be have sanctions or whatever. Again, this is another story where the FDA failed to do their job, isn't it? Take it from there. What is Belvig? What kind of injuries are we talking about? Absolutely. So let's start from the beginning. Belvig is a prescription weight loss drug. And what it was designed to do is combat, combat obesity, uh, type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, 
And what it does is it attacks the serotonin levels in the user. So it manipulates and tricks your mind into thinking that you're full without actually having to eat any food. Well, I handled the cases uh, early on. I tried the FinFin cases. The FinFin cases was a weight loss program that was going to be the new secret to losing weight. It killed hundreds of women. Again, it was another situation where the FDA had all the information they needed, failed to do their job. In this situation, Belvig was, the FDA said no in 2012, right? They said 2010. 2010, they mm -hmm. said no, you can't sell the drug. It was, I think, five to nine on the committee that said that. They reviewed everything, said this. First of all, it doesn't work. Second of all, it's dangerous. And then, after, so you have a political change. They come back, Belvig comes back and says, hey, you know what? We want another shot. And the FDA says, oh, sure. The one we turned down, the one we said no to, you can sell it now. Take it from there. Right, and you're exactly right. It's the same product that was denied by the FDA in 2010 was passed and approved in 2012. So what changed? Nothing changed except the people approving it. And in fact, when they denied it in 2010, the issues were, does this drug even work? And is it worth the cost uh, benefit analysis? In which time they knew, based off a New York Times article, that these laboratory rats were developing cancer or tumors that potentially could be cancerous at that time. So they were aware back in 2010 of the cancerous and carcinogen nature of this drug, yeah. the Lorcasin. And it doesn't stop there. I mean, this is a drug where they found a history of people having suicidal thoughts, uncontrolled bleeding. Men were growing breasts from it. Uh, you had blood, you had blood sugar problems that were putting people in, 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 in sometimes comas. This is, this is, and, but you had cancer and the, the FDA knew all of that. And they come in the second time and they start taking the word of the company. What is the company, Elias? The, the company is Elias. It was originally developed by Arena Pharmaceuticals, a San Diego based company. In 2017, it was sold to Japanese pharmaceutical Elias in which they really pumped up the advertising, got the sales increased to where eventually Bel Belvic, Belvic was the number one drug in the market at that time. Okay, so is this, you know, I'd like to say that this is just a one-off kind of situation, but we're seeing it more and more, Steve. You handle these cases, you understand that when you're dealing with the FDA, you may as well not have any comfort in what the FDA does. Most people in this business say that if a drug is not on the market for more than 10 years, don't touch it. What is your thought on that? Well, that's exactly right, because we're dealing with the FDA, and the way that they got the approval was saying, hey, go ahead and do this five-year study. We're going to go ahead and approve you, but go ahead and do five years and see what the cardiovascular effects of this drug are. Lo and behold, now we know people are coming down with cancer, mostly pancreatic, colorectal, and lung cancer, but there's a variety of cancers that are being affected by the people who are taking this drug. Totally unnecessary drug. Absolutely. This, this drug serves no purpose whatsoever. There are drugs that, that, that can accomplish the same thing that don't kill you. But Belvig is out there saying, oh, we've got this new drug. Look, if you're taking the drug, if somebody's out there taking the drug, what do they need to do? How, how do they protect themselves? Right. Stop immediately. Contact your farm. Uh, your, your, stop. They need to stop immediately. They need to contact their doctor and see what the alternatives are. As far as uh, doctors that are prescribing it, they should have been stopped prescribing it as it was taken off the market a year ago and to talk about the alternatives with their patients as well. As and get screened. How about exactly. something is just go get screened. Find out where these cancers are. Go get screened for the cancer, especially if you've been taking it a long time. Steve, thank you for joining me. Okay? Yes, sir.